Hi, and welcome to the Savage Podcast. I'm Rose, also known as Cheap Lazy Vegan on YouTube. And I'm Daniel, one of your favorite guest stars on Cheap Lazy Vegan's YouTube channel. We're two friends who love to talk about the latest trending topics. So get comfortable and join us while we give our savage take on just about everything. You are currently listening to the previous episode of this podcast, but if you would like to listen to this week's episode and get some exclusive content, go over to patreon.com slash the savage podcast. Would you like to get us started, Daniel? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Savage Podcast, starring yours truly and, of course, the lovely Rose. The lovely hungover Rose. Rose be feeling some kind of way today, Rose. I be feeling all kinds of ways. Why don't don't you talk to us? Tell us 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 what's going on. Oh, God damn. I just be drinking a little too much wine Mm. last night. You know, I just got to deal with this COVID. Were you were you getting in the in the Christmas spirit? And I was getting in the COVID depression. I'm just joking. No, I'm just joking. Uh, No, it was just uh, just a night, you know, Mm. with the roommate, a little too much wine. Yeah, I wasn't invited, but that's okay. You was not. You was That's not. Fine. You'd be a super spreader. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Do not joke about this stuff on the podcast. No, people are going to be stop, like, okay? I know people are going to be there's like, there's nothing else on our minds. We're trying to think of like stuff that we want to talk about today, guys. And we're like, everything on the news is COVID. It's a struggle. Like mm-hmm. literally everything right now, like all the stories, but we will not talk about, even though we just did. Well, we did. And we're probably gonna talk about it a little bit more, <laughs> yes. but then we'll, then we'll change the subject because, well, you know, I actually wish that I had you know, drank last night and I, I might, I might have to drink tonight because apparently tomorrow we're going into lockdown. No. So. Well, I really, uh, I don't want to have to close my cafe again, but, I know. but again, it's the problem is people don't listen. Mm-hmm. I think that's the issue. And people are having house gatherings. And m- my worry is when they, if they shut down restaurants, people, more people are going to gather at home. Well, this is the thing. And it's so ironic. Like mm. some of the plans the government was talking about, mm-hmm. like a lot of governments, not just in Canada, but I think in the UK as mm. well, they were saying, we're going to lock down now for a couple weeks and then we're going to open everything up so everyone can do their Christmas shopping right? and then go, you know, get, get together with their families. And I'm just thinking, okay, um, <laughs> so you're going to lock, yeah. lock it down for two weeks and then negate all of what you just yeah. did for those two weeks by everybody going shopping, everyone getting together with their families. Like, uh, yeah, I don't get it. Like, do they expect that the virus is just going to die out I, in the next two weeks? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I think it's probably good. Uh, well, People. God, how is it spreading so fast? I don't get it. I just don't understand it. Like, it's like <laughs> one of those things that's just going to Here we go again, this, just ram- rambling about the virus again. Oh, God damn. Oh, well, what did we do this weekend? Let's talk about that for oh, a yeah, second. Oh, yeah, so we had a really, really nice weekend. We did. Um, we talk like a... We talk like a couple, oh, yeah. by the way. We had a lovely weekend, the two we, of us. Oh, we're, we're, we're such a we, you went, know? Went up to the chateau, you know, <laughs> spent some time in the mountains. No, um, no, it was really nice. We went for a lovely Winter hike. hike. Yeah, winter hike. One of our friends um, came back to visit from London. She's originally from Canada. Mm-hmm. And she lives in London now, but she came back to visit yeah. and she wanted to go to the mountains. So and we wanted to go to the mountains. So we went, we went to Lake Louise, yeah. which is a very famous, beautiful, really beautiful lake, lake. in the mountains, in the mm-hmm. Rocky Mountains here in Canada. And it was absolutely gorgeous. There mm-hmm. was fresh snow. It was beautiful. It was very, it was very picturesque. Wasn't it was it? so nice. Cause it was like, even the trees, it was like, cause the snow was quite fresh. The trees had like this like thick layer of snow on yes. each of the branches. So like, it looked like a painting. Like everywhere you're uh, walking, you're just like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. It was winter wonderland. It was. A and what you'd be wearing on your feet there, Daniel. I was wearing my runners. You were wearing your runners and. And crampons. <laughs> crampons. Guys, have you heard of crampons? Of co- People have heard of crampons. I did not know that they were called crampons. I thought they were called cleats, but I think they're called both. I don't yeah. know where people use the word crampon. It's because it like and- clamps on to your oh, shoe. Oh, okay. That makes so sense. So clamp on, but I don't know why they call it crampon. Oh yeah. Crampon. Why don't they call it clamp on? Mm, I'm just not sure. So, anyway, I thought they were called cleats, but yeah. I think they're called both. Yeah, you can call them both. But anyway, yes. they're they're actually amazing um, because they like basically make your shoe have metal spikes on the bottom, and it's yeah. like so easy to do. Like I've done a couple hikes now in the snow with them, and it's amazing. Yeah, like you can't slip. Like you're like climbing up mm-hmm. things, and well, you can slip if you try to go down the stairs oh, yeah. full of snow <laughs> so we get to the top of where this tea house kind of lookout point is and we've gone up one way and then there's like another way that you can go down like the other side and like get to back to where you started and we were like i was like very like let's do this other other path because we've already been up one way let's go down a different way 
Um, and at first we're like, okay, cool. Like whatever. And we get to the top, like right at the edge. And there's these like massive set of staircase. That's like super steep. There was like probably three or four, um, different staircases going down. And because it had snowed so heavily, it was like a straight, like a slide almost. Like there was not stairs. And then I, we went down one set Mm -hmm. and it was not, it was not a fun time. And then, so I told Daniel, I was like, I think we, I I told Daniel and our friend, I was like, I think we should go back up and go the other way. And they're like, Daniel, Daniel likes to, um, how do I say you like to underestimate things? Uh. He's, he's always like. If something's going to take 30 minutes, he'll say like, oh, yeah, it'll just be another 10 minutes. Yeah, true. Or, you know, he'll be like, oh, yeah, this restaurant is just around the corner and mm-hmm. it's like 30 minutes but away. But sometimes I overestimate stuff, too, because like, yes. I'll, I'll be like, hey, Rose, I'll be at your house at 530 and I show up at 430. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? You told me. So basically, he has no concept of time or distance no. or anything. So he's like, oh, it's just just a few, you know, a mm. little bit of stairs. And then it flattens out. Look, it flattens out. Mm. It did not flatten out. But I make up for it in my sense of direction. That is true. You do have good sense of direction. (laughs) So these stairs. Anyway, we get down to the first set, right? And at this point, Rose was like, oh, my God, let's go back up the other way. I was like, no, no, no. Like, there's only a few more. And Rose was like, no, there's so many more (laughs) stairs. I can see them. It's because my hands were freezing. (laughs) Like, I was wearing these $1 gloves that I – it was like an impulse purchase that I bought at the grocery store. They had it at the very end of the checkout. And I was like, oh, I mean, I could use another pair of gloves. Mm -hmm. So I just – I was wearing those. Not the best for a hike. No, so this is the important (laughs) thing, guys. If you do go winter hiking, make sure you wear appropriate gear. Um, not those like thin, like, we, we call them magic gloves. I don't know what the yeah, actual word yeah. is for. I mean, it helped a bit yeah. when my hands weren't digging in the snow. <laughs> and then it got better because I, I convinced Rose to go down. So we were like sliding we on our butts. Up, yeah. We ended up just going on our butts because yeah. it was just easier down these stairs. Then we get to the bottom of the stairs and there's like not really a path. Like it's like <laughs> just basically like huge piles of snow and at one point rose steps and like goes all the way up to like her waist in snow <laughs> and i was like oh my god rose is gonna kill me but it was so and then funny. daniel couldn't stop laughing why daniel <laughs> should we talk about that too i don't think that's podcast appropriate is it? i think it's a, it's it's very much legal here oh, in that's canada true. okay so you as you know canada's legalized certain substances yes it's green it's green and <laughs> we're all about the green yeah we're all about the green and at the beginning of this hike I decided to you him know. and our friend. I did not yeah. um, partake in these activities because mm-hmm. not because I'm against it, but yeah. because when I'm out, I don't like to uh, yeah. be ha. That's true. And I mean, the thing is, it honestly, like it just made the hike. Like I just got really chill. And then yeah. I was like, b- b- for me, I get lazy. That's uh, why see, I just want to sleep or something. So as we're coming down the hill, I literally like broke into hysterics and I could not, <laughs> I could not stop laughing. And Rose didn't make it any better when she's like, oh my God, like so like animated and like falling in the snow. And it's like all that. I was like, oh my God. I was like, Rose, stop. Like I can't stop laughing and you're not helping. All I could hear was just Daniel just laughing. <laughs> like literally oh, God. the entire way down practically. Oh God. God. Anyways, guys, I'm sorry I'm not as animated today. Um, mm-hmm. Daniel will do most of the talking, which I'm sure he doesn't mind. Mm-hmm. It's weird when I sit up like this. Look at how small you look. Oh, God damn. I'll be oh, sitting God damn. Presenting You'll be a big man. Is that a fat joke? No. <laughs> <laughs> you body shaming me, Rose? I ain't. God damn, I don't body shame. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. I get a lot of people being like, you be a body shamer. Really? Mm-hmm. People be thinking that about you. Because I talk to you about weight loss. Oh, why? why, why uh, I, I know. I, I, I don't understand. I do get the concept of body shaming of like, you know, obviously someone like not being nice to somebody or, you know, treating somebody a certain way because of their, their size. Yeah. But when it comes to like, okay, like I personally like talk about like weight loss. You talk about weight loss. Yes. It's like I'm not looking at it as like body shaming somebody. I'm just yeah. talking about my own like journey and how I've, I know. Right. Yeah. It's, it's insane. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about PC culture for a second. Oh, God, God damn. damn. And let me just rant for okay, a second. Okay. Rose is about to go on a PC. Just rant. because somebody talks about them losing weight or gives tips on losing weight mm-hmm. doesn't make that inherently bad. Yes. You can give bad tips of course, and dangerous tips and dangerous advice. Mm-hmm. But when someone is talking about healthy, sustainable, long-term weight loss, that isn't, starving yourself Mm -hmm. that is not toxic or you know fat shaming yeah and And i've gotten emails and messages people being like oh well you know i normally like your content but i recently have decided to unsubscribe unsubscribe because 
because I mean, and it's fine. Look, if you don't like me talking about weight loss, like you can unsubscribe, totally no problem. Of course, but yeah. don't tell me that I'm fat shaming. Yeah, because they're like, oh, you should not be telling people how they should look. But it's like, <laughs> but this I'm is like, I'm get. not. I'm when, not. When, exactly. When at any point were you like, you should do yeah. this. You need to lose weight. <laughs> you no. You're talking about your own personal exactly. journey. Exactly. What your fitness journey did. How you lost your own weight that you wanted yes, to lose. Right? Exactly. So like, we're not saying that this person over here or you have to lose uh-huh. weight or that person. It's like we're reflecting on ourselves. We're saying yes. You know, we want to lose weight or we want to, mm-hmm. you know, try to be more fit, do more, whatever it is. Not, yeah. we're not saying it's not that an other... attack on you exactly. like but why, but why, why is... are people like this but everyone be so sensitive oh my god seriously nowadays i can't handle it sometimes yeah, I... I mean okay to be fair it's a very small percentage of mm-hmm. uh the you know the audience so yeah. like i won't make it seem like it's like everybody but it's a pretty significant chunk mm-hmm. of people that um seem to think that just simply even talking about weight loss is like fat, fat shaming. shaming yeah which is crazy it's crazy so like I just I I'm interested to know uh-huh. why people like people that are listening to this podcast. Oh god damn, maybe know, they hate me already. Oh, god damn, or me as well. But like why like maybe I need education on this, but like why is it No if, you don't if, <laughs> why is it if we talk about weight loss and I talk about my own fitness journey or whatever it may be, why how is that fat shaming someone else? Yeah. You know, it, it's I'm become not, I think it's because they think it obviously weight loss is has you know, is a very Big topic. Touchy subject. Touchy Touchy subject. Yes. And a lot of people, you know, whoa, Daniel, this be, this be, uh, (laughs) unprofessional. God damn. Anyways. (laughs) So yeah, weight loss is a touchy subject. Yeah. And I get, I totally get that, you know, if you're overweight, it's, Mm -hmm. it's not, you know, an easy world to live in. Exactly. So I understand, but there are distinctions between you know, someone fat shaming somebody mm-hmm. and someone just simply talking about weight loss, giving tips on how to lose weight to people that are interested. If you're mm-hmm. not interested, don't watch. I don't understand. I know this is so true. I really don't understand. Just don't watch. And then someone, people are like, oh, you need a trigger warning. A trigger, war- a trigger have heard, warning. Have what you is heard trig- of what a trigger warning no, is? No, oh, explain God, this Daniel. to me. Oh, the, you're poor. You're, um, you're not poor. Uh, well, what's what I'm, I, I really can't talk today, guys. I'm just <laughs> warning you. I was going to say, oh, you've shielded yourself from so much of the internet have, BS, yeah. so you don't know these terms. Yeah. So I try trigger to warning, s- separate myself, you know. Trigger warning is, no, you're just a grandpa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hence the grace. Oh, God. <laughs> You'd be a silver fox. Mm-hmm. Um, trigger warning is like, let's say before you, uh, there, there's like slaughterhouse footage, let's say. Before the slaughterhouse footage, there's like a trigger warning that says, Warning, oh, yeah, there yeah, will yeah. be, but I mean, they're, they're calling it trigger warning because people get triggered by certain things. And nowadays, the, the kind of trend mm. is when people are talking about weight loss mm-hmm. or calories or, you know, anything like that. People are triggered. They, yeah. So they add, people add trigger warnings in the beginning of the video being like, trigger warning, this video is talking about weight loss because people think, it, it, it's for people that have like eating disorders, apparently, mm-hmm. which I don't understand. I don't agree <sighs> with. I don't think that we need trigger warnings for things that aren't inherently, you know, violent mm. or bad or. Exactly. Like, yeah. like I, I get it when they're like <clears throat> the content you're about to view is extremely graphic yeah. and maybe disturbing to some viewers that I like, understand that I, that I get, but like, because somebody's overly sensitive about a certain topic <laughs> or some people like here's the thing mm. i understand that some people have eating disorders yeah. absolutely but like <laughs> talking about weight loss does not equate to somebody having an eating disorder or somebody mm-hmm. getting an eating disorder like if you like if i have some kind of issues the world cannot just be cater to my you know issues exactly you know what i mean well and, and, and you have to like think about it like probably well probably i don't know mm. how people developed eating disorders but like another thing too is a lot of it is like a product of the environment that you're in so if you're like exposed to like lots of magazines and certain things that like that depict you know how a person is supposed to look or how you know what i mean like a certain yeah. weight style or whatever mm-hmm. not weight what am i saying <laughs> weight style. I can't even Daniel, talk either. Daniel, I need at least you to be able to talk properly no, but today. That depicts women of certain weights on magazines, you yeah. know, things like that. That can also help, like, not help, but create. Well, that's the thing. It's like, yeah. isn't that a trigger as well? So exactly. it's like, how are you going to live your life? You know, like, it sucks. I get it. Yeah. But like, how are you going to live your life 
expecting trigger warnings from like being triggered by everything and, and you then can't, expecting you can't, exactly you can't exactly. put trigger warnings on everything though. exactly you can't unless you like shut yourself out and like yeah. live in your room and like quarantine yourself for the rest of your life i, I do think that like part of the onus is also on that person in a sense it's 100 you're choosing it's not like it's an ad don't or something. Cl- here's the thing the video says how i lost weight so mm-hmm. don't click on the video and tell me to leave a trigger warning when the video title is how i lost weight well exactly what but- do you think the video is gonna be about like, I, fuck. I, th- I thought it was going to be about, about your vegan trip to Toronto. <laughs> um, Guys, I'm hungover. I'm going to be extra bitchy oh today. Damn it. She, Rose is extra savage. Mm-hmm. You're living up to the... I'll be uh, extra savage. You're living up to the podcast. But it's true. Yeah. I don't believe in trigger warnings. I think that we need to learn mm-hmm. how to, you know, be like... Like, uh, we need to stop being so overly sensitive. Yeah. And also, like, you, you're... Uh, you're right. You, you need to stop being so like pe- we as a, as a uh-huh. society need to stop being so overly sensitive and also like, you know, develop our own minds as critical thinkers, as, you know, being able to also choose what we're watching. Yes. So like, for example, if I'm on YouTube or if I'm on these platforms and a video comes up about something that I don't necessarily like want to be watching or yeah. if it's like triggering me in any way, <laughs> instead of writing a comment on that video, you know what I do? <laughs> I clicked in another video and watched something else. Yes, you have the freedom to choose. Exactly, that. you have the options to do that. It's not like yes. you're forced. Somebody is forcing you yes. to watch. It's like it's like documentaries on TV. It's like TV shows. It's like anything. You as an individual have the choice yes. as to whether or not you want to watch that content. Mm-hmm. So I get it. If it's something extremely graphic, then obviously there's actual mandates by governments that say you have to have these warnings in there. But everything else. You know, you do have that option if you want to see it or not. And yeah. If you don't want to see a video, like your video, for example, mm-hmm. about about how you lost weight, don't click on the video. <laughs> like, I just don't understand. Like, I mean, it, it's almost like a yeah. like, are we holding people's hands now? Apparently, and being like, I think we have to. Like, and I, I'm sorry if I'm coming across a bit like not sensitive at all, because obviously I think there's some really there's some merit about you know people are really struggling with some of these issues and stuff, but at the same time. You know, if we start coddling people, yeah, then it's like, what are we? What kind of society it are we creating? Creates worse problems. Exactly. Like you're looking at like we talked about this before, but I look at like my like brother's generation and younger, right. these kids that grew up with social media, and you know, again, this cancel culture and this you know o- oversensitivity, yeah, and it's like creating youth that's like super anxious and super yeah. like you know not great social skills and all of these other other problems where it's like, okay, well, hang on, like I think we're being a little bit too. Um, Oh, like oh, not oversensitive but we're like hand holding too much yeah you know absolutely because even think about like yeah like I'm, how, how, what am i trying to say here but like our lives like we grow and learn from our experiences mm-hmm. and even even when people are kids quite often parents are like oh let them do it themselves yes figure it out for yourself try it they're not going to be like oh no don't do that don't do obviously with some stuff you have mm-hmm. to but and the kid slowly learns so as you become an adult you have more power to choose what you want to be doing. Yes. And so make the choices that you want that are going to impact your life yes. positively. Mm-hmm. Agreed. <sighs> oh God, it's so and if annoying. You do, if you do watch a video and you're starting to feel triggered by it, like Stop I'm watching exactly, it. Exactly. I'm not discrediting that this might make you feel triggered, but if it does watch something else. Yeah, But, and like, why is it specifically that it's like specifically no one asks me about trigger warnings about anything else, mm-hmm. but when it's weight loss, I need to do a trigger warning. What about, I was, I was thinking about this. I'm like, what about the videos where we're like drinking alcohol? Yeah. Isn't that triggering to alcoholics? There yeah. are alcoholics everywhere. Yeah. So why are we not holding their hand? Why are we not, you know, and imagine like, imagine being an alcoholic mm-hmm. living in this world. How hard would that be? Uh, so hard. It'd be harder, I think almost than, you know, actually it's hard to say, right? Yeah. I, Any I, I sort mean, of, you know, those types of addictions or yeah. disorders, they're all difficult. Exactly. So, I don't know if you want me to do like, why are you not asking me to do a trigger warning when we're drinking alcohol or talking about drinking? Mm -hmm. Maybe we should start doing that too. Where do you draw the line? This is it. Where do you draw the line? And Mm -hmm. that's why I think that's why I'm like with certain stuff where, where, whereby it is really explicit and like quite graphic content. You can see why there would be a trigger warning because actually that's disturbing to everyone. You know, it is, it's something that's hard for every single person to watch. Right. But when it comes to stuff like this, if it's only a small percentage of people that are, you know, uh, and I'm not dis again. I'm not discrediting yeah. that these people are feeling triggered. Like you're uh, entitled to your own mm-hmm. feelings, but you, as an individual, have the choice to choose if you want to continue watching something or not. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so you're not. Nobody's forcing you to do it. So, like, if you are feeling triggered, watch something else. Yes. Honestly, like that's the PSA. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is the takeaway here, guys. Yes. Like, I don't know why we got into this conversation. Because it'd be but I heat. wanted to rant. Yeah. I think I wanted to rant. It'd be a heated topic, Rose. It'd be. People be giving you some backlash. Oh, God damn. Well, you know, I have a lot to say oh, about exactly. this. God damn, you do. I'd just be holding but, my... Mm-hmm. <laughs> you be holding I'm holding your, my tongue. Oh, God damn. Mm-hmm. But this is the thing that's so difficult nowadays, too, is you have this, like, buildup now of, of, like, oversensitivity, cancel culture, all of this stuff where it's like you say one wrong thing and you set somebody one person off slightly it's like everyone gets crazy about it you yeah know? and i'm kind of like ah, i know people make it's so mistakes crazy i know too. people should be able to make mistakes mm-hmm. but when you're when it's online apparently not nope you're not allowed to make any mistakes That's you're not allowed it. to do anything you're not allowed to talk about weight loss without a trigger <laughs> warning in the future rose you need a trigger warning on that shit so yeah god damn Anyway, what we talking about? Oh god damn. Well, wasn't there a story about the 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 the, the famous girl? There you go. The famous girl that hit Charlie D'Amelio hits oh, 100 million TikTok followers, guys. So this- Daniel just discovered cuz Daniel's a grandpa. Oh my god. Um he just, well, I mean, to be honest, I don't know anything about this girl either, but mm-hmm. I've heard of her because I spend a lot of time on the internet. Yes, you do. And this girl, Charlie D'Amelio, mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm saying it right. She is, I think she's like maybe 18. No, I think she's 16. Shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Is she 16? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Okay, well, I think she was definitely was very young when she started as well. Mm-hmm. She's probably like 14 when she started. Yeah. And she became famous on TikTok mm-hmm. for doing very mediocre <laughs> dancing. Oh my God, this No is offense, thing. guys, like nothing against this girl. Yeah. But I genuinely am perplexed as to how... She got so famous. Yeah, this is the, this is what I don't understand. Okay, like <laughs> this is I'm gonna have a little rant now for a second <laughs> because I do get because don't get me wrong I know that there's like this new kind of form of celebrity with uh-huh. with the YouTube with the TikTok stars with all this right with, whereby it's like not ne- the traditional like Hollywood celebrity but it's like becoming just as big right. Well, some people that are in that bracket and in that category of like super famous on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, you can see why. Mm -hmm, Do you know what I mean? mm -hmm. There's some people that are actually like legitimately (laughs) super, super talented, you know, like have amazing TikTok dances, this kind of stuff. You're like, okay, okay, I can see this. They deserve to have 100 million (laughs) followers, right? So the reason that we came across this girl is because there was a story basically that it was like more of a non-story to be honest. It was like, it was to do with like cancel culture or something. Yeah. Yeah. So basically this girl, what's her name again? Charlie. (laughs) Charlie. She, her and her family, I guess are a little bit famous from this TikTok and everything else. They had, I guess, James Charles over to their house. Mm. They're having dinner. Who's also another famous, you know, makeup YouTuber. Yeah, exactly. Who's actually quite talented, I think. Yeah, he's a really good makeup artist. Mm -hmm. So, and again, a lot of these people that are amazing at makeup and stuff. Okay. I can see why like people would follow those channels right yeah um but anyway so i guess he was there and it was like some kind of comment about him about her not sounding as if she was satisfied with how many followers she right. had because she wanted to hit a million or 100 million and she had like 90 something yeah, and then james was like aren't you happy with 90 something million followers and she's like yeah but i want it to be like an even number and it was <laughs> it was like a joke right it was and, like yeah it was dumb like yeah. whatever you know and literally it's like i cannot see how this is a, a this story, is a, a thing. Apparently people were getting all crazy about it and being like, she's so ungrateful. And then there was a comment about how they had like a chef prepare their meal. And there was like some, one of the girls didn't like snail or something. And there was a snail and right. whatever anyway, but um, girls just being girls, you know, exactly. Teenagers so, being teenagers. Exactly. So I looked up this Charlie. <laughs> this is how Daniel discovered yeah. the perplexity of Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, okay, let's, let's watch some of her YouTube videos. Let's see what this girl's about. You know, like see her, <laughs> Her, um, as RuPaul would say, charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent. You know? <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was like, Char- I'm sorry, charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent. Mm-hmm. Is that? Sp- yes. Oh God! Yeah, I never thought of. <gasps> you just realized? Oh my God! That's charisma, so- uniqueness, nerve, nerve and, and talent. talent. Okay. Well. See you next Tuesday. Oh God. Damn it. <laughs> But anyway, so I thought you knew. That's I didn't know so that. Funny. I always thought it was just a saying that I he was says, like, you know. I was like, that sounds like it spells something else. It does spell something else. See but, you next Tuesday. But that's not what I was meaning. I was okay. meaning actually her like talent and so her, anyway. So you, know, you looked her up on YouTube, and yeah. what were what were your impressions? So like the thing is, is she was did, did a bunch of these videos and like. And I, it just it could be just because I'm old. Like maybe I don't get yeah, it, guys. Maybe, I, I might not maybe understand. We're just old. This could be it. But like she doesn't have that like that certain like. Mm, je ne sais je, quoi. You took the word out of my mouth, bro. <laughs> that certain je ne sais quoi, whereby you like you feel drawn to this person, right? And it was kind of like she was like, even when she was talking, like, 
hey guys <laughs> how are you welcome welcome back yeah. to my channel yeah um today i'm really excited uh <laughs> And I was just like, I, I was like, what am I watching? And then, and then, and then when I got to Rose's today, she was like, Daniel, I'll show you some of her, her famous TikTok videos. I was like, okay, this is going to be big. Like this, this is the reason why she's famous. And can you do the dance? I can't do the dance, but I was like, I can't remember Daniel how it was. Daniel was doing it earlier. It was like, I can't do it because I'm sat down, but like, it was, it was like, it wasn't even like a very Yeah. Like she's not bad, yeah. but she is not that great. She's not as talented to earn like a hundred yeah, million it, followers. It, it, she just, um... She's pretty. I feel like she maybe pe got famous because honestly, like my only explanation is that she's like the girl next door kind yeah. of, you know, so she's like, you know, she's pretty. She's not like, you know, Hollywood gorgeous, but mm -hmm. she's she's, you know, has that very pretty girl next, next, next door, door look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And her dancing also <laughs> is like girl next good. Door. <laughs> yeah, it's like good, but it's like not like Hollywood good. It's mm -hmm. more like, oh, the popular high school girl. Mm -hmm. that's doing the school dance type of good you know and mm -hmm. I, I don't know that's my only explanation but so, she blew up on tiktok like huge like, like again I'm, i don't understand i know i'm not discrediting <laughs> yeah like, i'm, I'm not, not like, trying we're to, not like, hating on her exactly we're not we're like, just very confused yeah. like I'm, I'm like i'm honestly i'm like yeah. awesome you did like you did good to get so famous but like i just don't get what that dynamic pull yeah. is you know like because like i said you see people that have 100 million followers and you're like okay I understand. I might not like them, but I yeah. understand why they have that following. Yeah. But when I, with her, I was just like, I know. I was like, okay, I don't well, get it. I mean, I feel like I could make an in more interesting <laughs> video. You know, maybe I should be on TikTok. But God you don't damn. look like the girl next door. Well, that's true. I look like the boy next door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after about Honestly, 10 or 15 years. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we're just old and we don't understand because we're not 15 years old. Yeah, true. Yeah. That's probably what it is. Yeah. But anyways, that generation, you know, good for her. Gap. She can, you know, milk it. I'm sure she's doing very well for herself. Mm -hmm. I just will never understand no. why she's famous. But it's like, it's like those train wrecks on YouTube as well. Like, But at least if they're a train wreck, I get that because they're funny to watch, right? You're just like, oh my, well, almost you're, cringy. It, it, exactly. It's yeah. like, so you can't, it's like, you can't turn away, you know? That's true. That's why they're a train wreck. You right. can't stop watching. So I get that mm -hmm. to you know in many ways true 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 but she's not a train wreck she's no. very put together seems very normal mm -hmm. very nice girl just not i would not picture you know 100 mm. million followers no 100 million what that's 100 million i know that is so many people like it's actually like a lot like it's like how many people follow like kylie jenner on like instagram let me see here a lot i would guess like 160. like 100 million let me see. 160 million, I'm guessing. Let's see. Going once, going twice. <laughs> Who's going to be faster? It's going to be you because I'm going to create a little boomer. 200 anymore. million, guys. So Kylie Jenner, easily probably the most famous person, one of the most famous people on this planet at the moment, Yeah. has just double what this girl has. Yeah. She has 200 million followers on Instagram. Yeah. TikTok is huge. Jesus I, I didn't Christ. understand there was... I, like, I didn't understand there were so many people on TikTok. Yeah, it's it's massive. Like I'd it's, really need to get on that TikTok you train. You do? Well, I've been posting stuff, but I, you know, I just, I are feel like I do don't some, understand. Are you going to do some dance it. videos? Maybe I should. <laughs> I think you should do some to like K-pop or something. Oh, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I don't have to be very good. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you could just, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, God. Again, not a diss, guys. Mm -hmm. Not a diss. Don't yeah. take this the wrong way. Don't I'm get just too saying. sensitive, but we don't want to trigger yes. people. Do we need a trigger warning on this as well? <laughs> I feel like we, we definitely need a lot of trigger warnings okay. for this podcast. Oh, God. <laughs> a anyway, lot. so Charlie, good for you. Mm -hmm. We'll never understand, but milk that shit. Yeah. I'm sure you'll be successful. Well, and I, Maybe get a bit of a personality. No, just <laughs> <laughs> and one thing I would say, too, to these like young uh -huh. individuals that are, you know, because we don't know how long this is going to last. Maybe it's their 15 minutes of fame or whatever it is. Like, make sure that you're, you know, saving money, being responsible, yes, you know, yes. doing this shit because the money train can end and then you can end up being fucked. Well, apparently her whole family is on this now, so yeah. I'm sure they're all making a ton of money and hopefully her parents are good with their money. Hopefully. Who knows? Who knows? We're talking about this the other day uh, when we were coming back from the mountains. We we're talking oh, yeah. about 50 Cent. Oh, yeah. And now he went bankrupt. Oh, it's crazy. Because, like, especially I was shocked with it because I remember at one point, like, he had his rap career. But mm -hmm. you know how a lot of people, like, a lot of, like, rappers and singers or whatever and actors diversify into other things. And he had this, like, mineral water, which did really well. The vitamin water. The vitamin water. And, like, sold it to... 
Pe- somewhere. Pepsi or Coke or some right. like one of those. Anyway, a big conglomerate made like so they much said money. estimated between sixty and a hundred million. And that's I'm like, what he sold it for. Yeah, something right. like this. His stake, his stake was worth. And then, that like much. a few years later, he filed for bankruptcy. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, how the? F- <laughs> and I'm never gonna know because I'm yes. not in that wealth category, I guess. But like, how do you spend so much money? That much money in like three years, I and, know. And, and 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 probably already he'd made so much as a rapper. Yeah, his house would have been paid off. Like mm-hmm. he wouldn't have a mortgage or car payments or any God. of that stuff, right? So it baffles my I mind. Know. But have you not seen the? The rich and the famous, the you know those shows that show the lifestyle of the rich and the famous? Lifestyles of the rich and the famous. Always complaining. Always complaining. Beautiful. <laughs> no, but um I think this is the problem. A lot of people, uh, they get famous and they mm-hmm. make a lot of money, but yeah. they don't necessarily know how to manage money. True. Okay. So that's problem number one is especially when they're like, you know, new to fame. Mm-hmm. Maybe they weren't rich before. Maybe they were struggling before. Yeah. And all of a sudden they get an influx of like a huge amount of money. Yeah. And they don't have the money to ma- money management skills. They're overly excited. It seems infinite. Yeah. So then they spend and spend and spend. Yeah. And before they know it, it's gone. I mean, it's shocking because we could never imagine spending that much money. Yeah. But I guess when you're rolling around in those circles, that's true. It's I, like you know, every I, night you would get the you know, ten thousand bottle of ten thousand dollar bottle of champagne. True, true, true. You know, that's actually true, and that's a good point because like there's also I remember seeing this show. I can't remember what it was, but it was like the ridiculous thing. Yes, for rich yes, people. I remember. Yeah. yeah, it was on like like much music or MTV maybe, or something. Maybe, yeah. And I remember there I was, was like, l- I loved that show. It was, it was a good, it was an addicting show. Yes. Some of the stuff you're like, Oh my God. So yeah. one of them, and I don't know if this is still around, but I remember specifically seeing this, this place where people would get this special type of salmon and this salmon, when it was cured or smoked or whatever uh-huh, they do uh-huh. to salmon, um, <laughs> they'd have an opera singer go down there and sing to the salmon because apparently it made the salmon like have a better flavor or something. What? After the salmon's killed? Yeah. You sing to a dead piece of fish. Yes. During the smoking process. It's whatever else. Yeah. Honestly, I... It was something we, like that. We, we're in the wrong industry. Yeah. We need to be in the industry of dumb mm. shit that yeah. rich people will buy. Exactly. <laughs> well, there's another one too. So I think I've, I'm pretty sure it was something along those lines of singing to salmon or something like singing this to or salmon. playing a violin or whatever it yeah. was. It was music related. And then there was another one where there were like different types of like caviar. And there was this one rare type of caviar that they would have. And it was like per cracker. One scoop of this caviar was like $600. And they were having it at this wedding party where there was like a gazillion See? of this. So you're 50 cent. You're giving all your friends and family $600 caviar. True. Before you know it, you're bankrupt. This is very true. <laughs> and also, it, well, you're right. And also like going to nightclubs. This is where they spend a lot of money. How do you declare bankruptcy as a person? So I think what you have to do is... Forfeit I'm, all your assets? I don't know how Like, how does that work? No, but, but I think people can be sneaky about it. So I think what a yes. lot of people do is they might have their assets under... Someone else's name? Or a, a shell company. Oh. So they put their assets under a company, so it's not actually held under their name. Right. Then if And, and the reason that people do this is because I think, and I have no idea, but I think the way bankruptcy works is like, let's say I had like a zillion dollars in debt, mm-hmm. and I was like, look, I'm going to claim bankruptcy. It means that all of those creditors can no longer come after me. Right. They have to like stop. It's like almost like my debt just right. gets like wiped clean almost. Right. So it doesn't necessarily mean that he spent all his money technically. Yeah. So he could, I mean, we don't know the details he of He was this. having issues repaying stuff probably. Right. That's yeah, probably exactly. He probably had a lot of debt through different, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um. But yeah, God damn. I know. It's it's really sad. But you're right. It's a story we see time and time again with celebrities, to be honest. A Michael lot, Jackson. Yeah, I think he also. big mm-hmm. one. Trump. Didn't he go bankrupt a few times? Probably. I think so. We see a lot of others like, well, like there's so many celebrities yeah. where you see where they're like, you know, at one point, Lindsay Lohan was another one that had like so much money oh and my now God. she's like struggling. And oh God, I wonder what she's doing now. Who knows? Who knows these days? God damn. Anyways, so be but good yeah. with your money, guys. It's important. It's important. It's important. Don't be spending it like, you know, it grows on trees. Oh, okay. Dang. So, so other apparently there's some other stories. There oh, was, there's an is, exciting story this here. This is very one. cute. Finally, a good, like a, like a happy story. So... I don't know what you y'all been doing this weekend. Y'all. So, so part of the weekend we talked about, I went for a hike, but then yesterday, Sunday, I spent all day decorating my house. Oh, not all day, but like a while. We put the lights on the front of the house. Aww. We put the Christmas tree up. And then I like went crazy with decorations. Like I had all these like 
homemade ones from when I was like a kid, which I found. Oh. So I put them all, and my dad was like, what is going on? He's like, this is too much. There's too much stuff. <laughs> and, I, and then I pulled out this like massive thing of all these like different colored like yeah. finger knitting strings oh. and stuff. And my dad was like, no, 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 no? Not, not all of that. I was like. <gasps> Why? I mean, you're all going to be home anyways. You might as well decorate the house. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. But it looks so nice. We have like little lights that go around the fireplace now. And like, it's, it's Oh, I wish I could visit, God but. Damn. I feel like I ain't invited. (laughs) So uh, in the cheer of the cheer of holiday, the the cheer in the holiday spirit. Thank you. In the holiday spirit. So actually one of my friends sent me this, which was kind of cute. So uh, depending on where people are, I don't know if everyone gets these Hallmark films. I've never seen a Hallmark film. So I've never actually, I don't think I've ever actually officially watched one. I've seen commercials for them. (laughs) How do we describe it, Daniel? It's very, (laughs) (laughs) it's very like, it's very like cheesy, over the top romance, like and cutesy, it's very white. <laughs> <laughs> it is very like, it, and it's and it, very white, and it's super cheesy. Like I remember, I did actually watch one. I think I saw, uh-huh. it. and I remember at one point the girl like goes to the guy, and she was like, because she was like not dating at the time, but then her neighbor happened to be this super hot, amazing guy, which never fucking happens. Yeah, I'm sorry, literally never happened. Mm-hmm unrealistic expectations <laughs> you know this is the problem with these I types know. of movies on a side note every time that i've traveled yeah i'm always like oh maybe i'm gonna get sat next to a yeah. like really good you do this all the time daniel is like you um watch like too many rom-coms or something I think so and then you like have these fantasies about like i'll be like i'll be like oh my god like maybe this time when yeah. i take a plane and i can tell you right now okay i'm 32 years old i have taken <laughs> I don't know how many flights in my yeah. lifetime. It has never happened. Yeah, I've never had no. a cute guy next to me on nope. a plane. I've always sat next to a screaming baby, <laughs> some like strange person. I mean, it never. One time I was at the back of a plane with a bunch of prisoners. Oh, God. That was fun. Um, so different situations. I've had one time when I was on a bus, uh, an overnight bus to Paris from mm-hmm. London. And this guy was sitting next to me and he, was, he started talking to me. Mm-hmm. And then later, I think he like asked me for my Facebook, but I wasn't into him. Like uh-huh. he wasn't like yeah, that yeah. great. Yeah. But anyways, so it but if he was cute, then it could have happened. I mean, if we were in a Hollywood Hallmark or in a Hallmark film, yeah, then he would have been hot. Exactly. And then we would have fell in love yeah. and got married. Well, of course, then they'd be living next door. And yes. at, at the time, <laughs> you would be not dating. And then all of a sudden, you realize after he's moved away that you're still that you, you love him. Yes. You would show up and tell him that you you know you wanted to you would you wanted to date him. And he said, "Don't worry, I would have waited for you. <laughs> I was waiting. I was hoping you'd come and find me again. I'm not looking at anyone else, just you." And then we live happily ever after. Exactly. Ever happily ever after. God so damn, Daniel. <laughs> I'm probably going to watch this one, to be uh, honest. The game, oh, yeah. what the heck? Damn it, I gave it away. You did. You threw away the punchline, Rose. Damn it. Okay, well, they, they don't know. You yeah. tell them. So basically, these Hallmark films are always traditional, white. very, very <laughs> white, very guy meets girl, girl meets guy, blah, 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 live happily ever after with a white picket fence and seven kids. Um, <laughs> so this, apparently, the Hallmark Holiday Fair, they're making their very first gay couple one. Ooh, I mean, honestly, it's kind of shocking because it's like 2020. I know, mm. but but it's still credit pretty, where credit is due. Exactly, and I'm pretty shocked. So apparently, one and of, of course they're good looking. I know they are. <laughs> they have to be. It's a hallmark. It's a hallmark. Um, it's funny because actually, that this guy I know, <gasps> he's from, is he Mean Girls? Yes. Shut up! I know he's actually gay, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, oh my yeah. god, guys! I was heartbroken when I found uh, this out. Really? Yes, because like he was so cute. Mm. So the guy in Mean Girls, what was his name in Mean Girls? Aaron Samuels. Aaron Samuels. <laughs> <laughs> you love of that I know that. You know, you know everything, don't you, about Mean Girls? I don't. I just don't like, lie. Anyway, you're such a Regina George. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I am such a Regina George. I'm a bully. Um, to me. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Trigger warning. <laughs> Oh my god! Mm. Yes, and I was like, I thought he was so cute. He was very cute. He was a very okay? good looking, and he was very good looking. And then I don't know why I found out he was gay, and um, it just broke my heart a little bit. It just did. He so is gay, right? He is, yeah. In person. He is, he is. So when so his <sighs> name is so the actor's name is Jonathan Bennett. So he was first sent the script for this movie called The Christmas House. Mm. His initial thought was, okay, who's my love interest? Who's my girl? Oh shit! And it's an understandable in- instinct. After all, it's the Hallmark Channel, which does these like, you know, again, these like really cheesy, you know, movies, or whatever. Very like P- P- PG. PG. Yes. yes. Um, and then as it turns out, his love interest wasn't a woman. Instead, he'll play half of the first gay couple highlighted. 
And he was like, apparently his jaw practically hit the ground. And when he then, what am I saying? And then <laughs> I read the script and I was in tears. Aww. I thought, is this really happening? This is groundbreaking. Oh, that's cute. Mm-hmm. I think that's really nice. That's and also, very nice. I think it's really um, important. God Sorry. Damn, the unprofessionalism <laughs> versus me now. Ye. Oh, God damn. We'd be unprofessionals here. Um, but uh, this is like also really good. And you know what also I really like about this is the fact that they chose Jonathan Bennett, for example, to play um, the character. Because he's, he's also hot? well, yeah, no. and he's gay, <laughs> and he's gay in real life. Because there's also a big trend like before where they like they would have not that there's anything wrong with having same, mm. like uh, straight couples or ha- like guys playing gay, right. gay guys, but then also it's like you know why not just use a gay person exactly because there's right. that, that opportunity there and we can make some you know like some right. changes right yeah 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 it's like it's the same for like the trans community as well quite often in the past a lot of the trans characters that were portrayed mm. in, in films and TV were played by like. A man or a woman, right? But not, but not a, a trans, trans person. person. Oh. Yeah. So now they're yeah, that's weird, hey. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like I'm gonna do another little rant. Okay, go for okay. it. Okay, you rant. So you, go- <laughs> you know that movie, Crazy Rich Asians. Yep. My I biggest complaint. Do you know what I'm gonna say? Is it about the main guy? Yes. Yeah. My biggest complaint about that movie. Look here. Here's the thing. It's not that big of a deal, mm-hmm. but like what really annoyed me, and again, I usually don't care about this, but mm-hmm. I think it's because they made such a fuss about it being an all, an all Asian. Asian cast. Yeah. And they were like, oh my God, it's the first movie where it's an all Asian cast. Mm-hmm. Not that I really care about that, but like, of course, it's kind of nice to have, mm-hmm. you know, so much Asian rep- representation. Yeah. But then the main character, the main guy that was in the movie is half Asian. Yeah. And I'm like, He's not even supposed to be half Asian. I don't mm-hmm. think he's supposed to be no, half he's supposed Asian. To be fully, fully. He's supposed to be full Asian. And you, when you see him, as soon as I saw him, I thought he was half Asian. Yeah. He's half Asian. And like another thing, it's like, I get it if he was like a really great actor. And no offense to this guy. <laughs> you're a good looking guy, dude. But you weren't that great of an actor. Oh, God. And I was like, any Asian guy could have played this. Like yeah. you could have cast any, any guy. Mm-hmm. That was Asian, and he would have done a pretty good job. And you decided to choose for the main character in a supposedly all Asian, Asian cast. cast. Yeah. Of course, he had to be half white. Do you know what I don't get though? What? What they did make a really big deal about this movie. I'm sure yeah. there's other big films that have had all Asian casts. I well, I, maybe it was like first Hollywood film. Okay. Oh, okay. Maybe that's my guess. But like, I, I swear to God, like, what about like um, Memoirs of a Geisha? Are was there it- white people in there? There might, there might I don't be. know. Oh no, I think there is. Oh, there's some, there's some. Right. There's some like soldiers or something at the end. I right. Think. Yeah. So there probably are. What? I mean, I don't know. Maybe they're. But uh, like, what? I guess they're not as big of blockbusters. But I was thinking like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, House of uh, House of Daggers. There must be non Asians. That's why they said it. No. Yeah, maybe. Or because you're right. Maybe this is the first like big Hollywood production. But Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon was that, a big Hollywood. Yeah, it was production. Hollywood, wasn't it? Was that all Asian? I'm like ninety nine point nine percent sure. <laughs> It was in China. No, yeah. oh, that was a good movie. It now was I remember. So good. I forgot about that movie. I watched. I remember. I mm. watched it once, and I was like, "That was good." I love it. I love it. I love it so much. Oh my god. But anyways, that's my rant about. Yeah. You know the fucking movie yeah. because there wouldn't, be, there wouldn't be anything wrong if they hadn't made such a big deal. Like, oh yes. my god, all Asian cast. Exactly. And, and blah, it blah, would, blah. I mean, it would still be kind of annoying. It's kind of like having. I mean, maybe it's not annoying. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a little, you know, whatever. But Overly it's like, sensitive? <laughs> yeah. I needed a trigger warning for that movie. You did. You, you well, did, you, it's just annoying because it's like, okay, you're finally going to have a movie with Asians in it. And mm. then, of course, the main guy has to be half Asian. Yeah. Because, God forbid, you put a full Asian guy in there. Damn. And, like, the his friend was hotter than him and he was mm. fully Asian. You know what I think? You know what I think? <laughs> You like the friend. Seriously, um, I was so annoyed. The thing, the thing is though, too, is like I feel like, um, you know, <laughs> great that they've made this this film. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. Crazy Rich Asians. Did but, you like it? I did like it. Yeah. yeah. But what they need to start doing, which I think they're starting to, but they're just not doing it enough. Uh-huh. Of the other big Hollywood films, they need to start having like just not necessarily like all Asian cast, all white, or all, yes. you know what I mean. They need to start mixing it up. Like exactly. I don't understand this whole like all Asian, all black. Like, yeah. Can't we just like have a film where it's all mixed? Exactly, because that's what. And- and I would like to see a film where the Asian person is the main character and the white people are the, uh, you know, the Extras. supporting characters. Yeah. No, but this see, is, that would be groundbreaking. This, no, this is, this is what I mean. Is yeah. Like have like, you know, like, yeah, the main couple or whatever is, mm-hmm. is, is Asian. And then the rest of the cast is like kind of. You're right. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. They're all Asian. Exactly. I thought it was. Well, maybe there's like one random white. Per- oh, yeah. There's one random white guy in where, there. How the hell is he in there? I don't know what he did in there. He did nothing. I swear to God. <laughs> Maybe he was in there for a quick minute for a cameo. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but other otherwise they're I all love Asian. Michelle Yeoh. 
who's this who's this woman she's been in a few big she looks really familiar yeah, was, was in, she in, was she in the the she wasn't in crazy rich asians was she mm, no. i think she was the mom wasn't she she looks like the mom i think she's the mom mm, okay maybe Anyways. Okay, anyway, we've gone off anyway, on oh another gosh. tangent. Anyway, but so yeah, I would like to see a film where the main character is Asian. Maybe yeah. there are films like this. I, we just don't know. But I also feel like a lot of the time mm-hmm. the, the Asian or the other, like if it's a black person yes. or somebody else, they're like typecast. Yes. So you might have them in like, like let's say it's like But a, they're like doing kung fu. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, they'll have yeah. like the random Asian guy. Yeah. Like, oh my God, there was a really, ah, what was the film? I think it was 16 Candles. It's like a really old film. Oh, yeah. I remember that. And they had that. this like one Asian guy in it that was like oh, God. so crazy. And his name was like Long Duck Fong or something right, like that. Right. And he was like, talking in an accent yeah. and stuff. And yeah. Ta- and I was just like, that's what I mean. Like, I would like to see like um like a like a Titanic. Right. But the two, uh, the, the couple yeah. is like. A mixed A mixed, mixed couple. race. Yes. Exactly. Like, why can't that happen? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. So, it's so crazy. that It's like. Because, like, in real life, if you're in, like, North America, there's, like, you know, mixed couples everywhere, exactly. you know? You know, uh, we're not a couple, but we're friends, <laughs> we're and I'm Asian, and you're white, and... We're a mixed you know, friendship Yeah, couple. we're... A mi- <laughs> this is, like, normal. But Hollywood yeah. is, like, you know, not normal, right? So I know. I just don't get why they're so, like... They've been yeah. so, like, mono, like, yeah. always, like, white couples. I know. And so I just it's true. It doesn't make sense. It's still very racist, I guess. Yeah. Because, like, again, that's not yeah. really... I mean, even in the States and stuff, that's not what we see in society. Like, yeah. yes, there's minority groups, but, like, you know, like, look at, uh, like, Calgary, for example. Uh-huh. There's a lot of different people mm-hmm. here. Yeah. So... But even in, like, even just, if you think about film, and you're right, like, 16 Candles, that was not that old. Like, that was, like, what, in the 80s? 90s? 80s oh, was, was in the 80s. I think so, yeah. So, like... and. That was like just, you know, a few decades ago. Mm-hmm. But like the when we see that, it's like it would never happen now. That kind of like crazy. And mm. maybe it does still to some degree. But there's another movie that like um, was very racist. I th- was it like Breakfast in at Tiffany's or something? Mm-hmm. It was like a 60s film. Oh, with uh, Audrey Hepburn. Yes, I yeah. think. I think it was that film. I, seen I could it. be wrong. Yeah. But there was a film where there was like a very... Um, like very racist kind of like stereotype of like a Asian man. Like maybe he was Japanese or something. Mm. And like, he was just like, just like awful. And like, I don't, I can't remember what it was portrayed very badly. Mm. And then of course at that time it was probably just like, Oh, this is just how it is. Right. Yeah. But then later on, you know, people are like, this is like wrong. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, it, it's crazy how that wasn't that long ago. If you I really know. think about it, you know, but it's anyway. crazy. I mean, I feel like, you know, we are slowly making progress. Mm-hmm. It just didn't happen fast enough. God well, damn. apparently we the this first, it's 2020 and there's the first goddamn queer couple mm-hmm. on uh, on fucking Hallmark. Mm-hmm. But I feel like Hallmark. Yeah. When I think Hallmark, I think very like conservative almost. Yeah, true. So it's not too shocking. Mm-hmm. But I think even now the conservatives mm-hmm. have to be like, you know what? We can't really be homophobic anymore. Yeah. But this is also OK. Just as like a side note uh-huh. about this, about like gay, like gay film as well. So something that, is, that has always bothered me about mm. gay film is like 99.9% of the, it's starting to change a little bit yeah but 99.9% of the films that are made with like a gay uh, romance or mm, whatever mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if that's the main focal point or even if it's not it's like very it's always like very tragic so like oh they always like, have like really really sad stuff going on so you look oh, at like Brokeback the, Mountain you look at right. like Prayers for Bobby you look at um, there's a couple others I watched up like a bunch of like independent films uh-huh. tons of tons of stuff and a lot of the like gay cinema is like always like you know somebody's and I get it like there's, it's hard yeah. someone struggles with coming out like yeah. there was there was an Australian film called I think it was called Monster Pie or something uh-huh. and it was this really cute film about this like this these two guys at school that like end up falling falling for each other because mm-hmm. they're working on this film project and the one guy like couldn't cope with like coming out and everything else so he ended up like killing himself oh god and that like is a trend in a lot yeah. of gay film and it's like it's kind of sad because i would also like to see you know if there was like a titanic film like a big yeah. blockbuster titanic I, is titanic is a uh, tragic i know no, no, that's bad true example. yeah, yeah okay. bad example bad example let's do like i don't know some kind of rom-com like you um, want to see a rom-com yeah like a rom-com or yeah. something where it's like actually the main couple is gay 
Yeah, that'd you know be what nice. I mean, or just like yeah. you know, it doesn't have to. It doesn't always have to be this tragic story, exactly. which I get. I, I I do understand why so many films are like that because yeah. of the fact that it is obviously like a struggle. Yeah, and and it has been a struggle for many years, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like forbidden love, and you know people yeah. are against it, so it's like fighting against society. So it's mm-hmm. not necessarily just focused on the love story yeah but i understand why like of course we should definitely have different types of gay film mm-hmm. not just you know fucking tragedy exactly or, or, <laughs> e- or even like even like another good ex- well not a good example mm-hmm. but like even like random films like an avatar or something right it's always a head like it's a guy and a always girl, heterosexual, guy and a girl right? yeah so that yeah. would be kind of it would kind of be cool to see yes. something else like two girls maybe or right two, you know it's yeah. just mix it up a bit yeah. But again, I think we still have a long way to go before long that Long way to go. Yeah. yeah, it's always like heterosexual and then maybe like mm-hmm. th- there's like a gay friend. Yeah. Or, you oh, know, something like that. There's always a gay, there's always a fucking gay friend. <laughs> You're the gay friend. <laughs> and he always is like super, super, super typecast. Gay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Super over the top. You know, oh, oh God. Oh, God. Never any like nice romantic story or. Maybe well, you should, maybe you should write a film. God dang. And- <laughs> Maybe I should. Well, Maybe well, should, well. Speaking of which, we have an idea that we need to pitch to the uh, <laughs> national. Oh, yeah. We need to pitch to Netflix. If anyone wants to pitch Netflix for us, yeah. this is what we're thinking post COVID. Post COVID, so this is our plan, guys. All right, <laughs> this we are is go- my dream. <laughs> yeah. This is our dream. Yeah, we're gonna do. <laughs> It's probably never going to happen, okay? We're just throwing it out there just Don't for fun. Don't say that that is negativity, okay, Daniel. Right. No, I'm washing that Okay, we are going to manifest this. So we're going to pitch to Netflix and we're going <laughs> to talk to <laughs> We're going to talk to them about a um it's kind of like a vegan traveling, but it would just be like basically us going to like other like really big cities like Toronto, New York, all over the world and explore the vegan stuff that they have there. Yes, yeah, so vegan travel show. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. You really have a roundabout way of I explaining do. So basically a vegan travel <laughs> show. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be starring me and Rose. Yes. So check it out on Netflix near you. God damn. <laughs> And if you well, we should just start uh, doing it on uh, YouTube and mm-hmm. then pitch it to Netflix. Oh, God damn. Mm-hmm. Maybe we create a new channel just for that. Oh, God damn. No one that. watch. <laughs> <laughs> no one will want to see. No one gonna watch. Oh, God damn. Well, we'll see. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's always what I wanted. I was like, oh my God, this would be like the dream job is to travel mm-hmm. and eat. But I think it could be like, it could work because there's definitely like, I've seen some really popular yes. travel shows out there, right? Yes. But it's just like that certain, like you need to have that certain like niche. And I just, I, yeah. have, I feel like I've seen lots of travel shows. I haven't seen one that focuses also on the veganism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how cool would it be to like, again, go to these places, still be somewhat of a travel show, like maybe do some tours and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. random mm-hmm. shit but like do it in a vegan way yes so like for example if there's like um you know like the typical i just thought of this on top of my head but like a wine tour for example yes and typically you get like a charcuterie board and all this right. stuff but do it the vegan way and see yeah. what options so that people that are traveling can be like actually i saw them do this mm-hmm. you know yeah God damn, i, I mean i kind of do it on my youtube channel already that's true you do do it but i mean but like an official we would like, be the dynamic duo oh, God damn. <laughs> Eating all that vegan food everywhere. Oh god damn. We'd be overweight. <laughs> and we could we could even put it out to like well actually I don't know how that would work with a TV show because that would be different. But I was like thinking like we could put it out to people. Oh you saying, thought about this. God damn, you, you thought about this. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. <laughs> These are my positive vibes going mm-hmm. out there, Rose. I was gonna say we could throw it out to 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 people and say, you know, we're going to this city. What are some places that you like? Let's, yes. say, let's say we're going to New York and then like lots of people maybe haven't had the opportunity to go to New York. Yes. What do you want us to try there? Yes. While we're there. Yeah. And that kind of stuff. But then we're going to gain so much weight. We're going to get, we going to get the, the cool. travel 15. <laughs> More like the travel 25. Oh God. Um, but yeah, anyway, so check it out. I mean, no, it's, it, check it out. Check it, check out. it out guys. It'll be on Netflix by next week. By uh, 2027. <laughs> But yeah, that would be really cool. So that would it, be fun. That would be very cool. Mm-hmm. If an, I mean, sometimes because I was telling Daniel, I'm like, sometimes I watch these travel, you know, yeah, these travel food shows, mm-hmm. and like, you know, I think we're more interesting. <laughs> but maybe that's just us thinking that, Rose. Yeah, I think I I delude myself. Mm-hmm. I think I'm very interesting. <laughs> God damn! And I make myself laugh, and then I think I'm hilarious. Mm-hmm. You well, know? We should, we should do. You know that, when you go on you know? dates and you just laugh, but then you realize that they're you not laughing laugh. with you. No, no, no. <laughs> They, they, of course they laugh with me. Come on. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh my God, I had such a good time. And then later on, I'm like, actually, I was just laughing at my own jokes. <laughs> <laughs> As in, he didn't make me laugh. I just made myself laugh. Exactly. You were just the, you were the entertainment I for the evening. I was the entertainment. <laughs> Gosh, you, you should do stand up, Rose. Oh, God damn. I think you should. God damn, that'd be a, there's another, there's another venture. Career opportunity. So Rose is going to start stand up. We're going to do a, a, a travel <laughs> show. We're not going to have any social life whatsoever because we're going to be working all the time. And then we're going to gain a bunch of weight. Yeah. Perfect. 
God damn, that's the plan. <laughs> All right, what's the next story? Is there another story? Or are I, we done, I dude? Think that, well, how long have we been talking for? Oh, like, damn, years. we've been talking for a while. But you know, we there was the one about the the new feature. We can quickly talk talk about the new feature. Oh yeah, so of, Twitter now has a um has the stories feature. Like, what is with these? Like, you know what I don't get. Do they not like? Can't they like um like not copyright mm. these types of things? Like patent them? Yeah, because like you know how like um obviously it started with Snapchat, mm-hmm. the kind of stories, and then Instagram stories basically mm-hmm. stole that idea. Let's be honest, mm-hmm. and then now it's huge on Instagram, IG stories, and yeah. now YouTube also has stories. Yeah, and I think Facebook. Well, I guess Facebook is connected to Instagram. Yeah, and now Twitter has what's called Fleet. Fleet, yeah. What a weird. Oh, because Fleet tweet. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. So now they also have their own version of stories, mm-hmm. and um, apparently one of the issues is that you can like tag people that have, have blocked you. Yeah. So like for example, if me and Rose got into a huge fight and Rosa <laughs> said she wanted to block me off all social media on Twitter. She could block me. But then what I could do is let's say I have like millions of followers and I'm like, Rose has wronged me. <laughs> I could put in my, in my story, something about her and send my followers over to her. Not only am I able to do that, even though she's blocked me, I also think that they commented that at the moment you don't get notified when somebody tags you in a, oh, okay. so you don't know you could, you might not know that you were tagged. Right. In someone's story. It's not like Instagram where you get a notification where it's right. like, you've been tagged in this story. You don't get right. a notification. I'm sure they'll fix it. Yeah. I mean, they'll, they'll probably, they'll, they probably need to make some yeah. changes. What I don't get though is you're right, but but the, the reason that they can do this, why I feel like they can do this, is it's like you can patent something, right? Mm-hmm. You could patent this stand, for example, right? Yeah. Which and I could look at this stand and be like, oh, that's a really good stand, and I make mine with one little right. different thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll be like, well, you know, we can go to court, but like it's a different model. Yeah. So I feel like with it's this, true. what they might do is they like like Twitter could argue, oh, it's it's a it's called Fleet. Yeah. It's, it's a different concept. It's not like the stories because of X, Y, Z. Right, right. So make it slightly different, you know? Yeah, you're probably right. So it's, yeah. a, it's a shady way, but it's it's what people, it's like what we were talking about Amazon the other day. <laughs> you know how if like you're selling this on Amazon. Oh, right. It's super successful. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to make something a little bit cheaper, look uh-huh. similar and yeah. try to sell it. Yeah. So. So yeah, that's uh, Twitter. Do you have Twitter, Daniel? I don't. You don't? No. Sometimes Twitter can be very entertaining. The thing is, I heard. I heard that Twitter, like, there's some interesting stuff on there. The reason I never got into Twitter, and, like, again, I, <laughs> and, and same with Snapchat. I was never big into Snapchat. Right. You're just a grandpa. No, no, but that's part of it. <laughs> but, like, my thing is, I love Instagram, for example. Yes. I love Instagram. I used to love Facebook. Now, I was pretty big on Facebook back when Facebook I think came everyone out. everyone was big, and yeah. now it's, like, a bunch of grandmas. Yeah. And gra- oh, you belong there. I, I do. <laughs> I have my community. Um, but like the thing is, is when Facebook came out, you know how you could like update your Facebook status? Like you could say, oh, I'm feeling this or you could like say something, which I don't really do that anymore, but I used to. Um, when Twitter came out, I was like, well, what's the point? It's just like your status update. Mm-hmm. So I never got Twitter because I was like, oh, I have my own Facebook thing right, right now. And then I had Snapchat for like the l- shortest time. Yeah. Because of face swap. <laughs> oh yes, it was seriously so fun. It served a it that served initial, a moment. That initial like when they first started doing those um, face swaps and filters. also just like filters. Yeah. God, those Snapchat filters were just glorious. They were so good. Like, and they it was were like the so funniest. Good. Now we're used to see. This is another thing. It's like mm-hmm. you just get used to these things, yeah. and it's not as funny anymore. Remember, no. we used to like laugh so. Oh hard. my god, when the when that face swap <laughs> filter came out, like literally, I'm not kidding you. I am not kidding you. For about actually, I think it was from when I moved in London. Yeah. For the six months that you were there, we (laughs) literally would have nonstop. I remember one time we went to uh, Kygo and it was four of us. And we all took turns doing like face swaps at the end of Kygo. <laughs> oh, really? And literally the face swaps are so ridiculous. Oh, God. And I just remember us like laughing so yeah, much. Yeah, those face swaps were um, great. But then, you know, it, as as time goes on, it got, you know. You just get used to it. Yeah, you get mm-hmm. used to it. And you're just like, okay, well, you know, the, had that moment. And then yes. I got rid of Snapchat. Yeah. Yeah. I used to use Snapchat mm-hmm. and then Instagram stories came out. Yeah. And then I was like posting on both. Yeah. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. I'm just going to get rid of Snapchat. Well, and the thing too, even with Instagram uh-huh. now, Instagram, I think it's like expanding kind of crazily. Like yeah. First you have, okay, you have Instagram, you have Instagram stories. Now you have uh, IGTV. Mm-hmm. Now all of a sudden you have reels. It's yeah, like no. You have just too much stuff. You're like, okay, well that's, you know, you could stop at IGTV. <laughs> You no, know? but they want you to. They want you to keep watching the platform. That's true. Keep they spending time keep on that platform. On there, you know, mm-hmm. that'd be the social dilemma. It'd be a dilemma. <laughs> God damn! It's like, oh my god! One last thought uh-huh. about that. It's kind of crazy when you get the um, 
notification from your phone that shows how much time you've spent on your phone. Do, oh you, get, God. do you get that? No. So Apple does that. They'll send you automatically. Yeah. So every, I think I get it weekly or something. So how much time do you spend on your phone, Daniel? A lot. How much time? I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's a lot. Like hours. You have to know the number. It'd be hours. Does it say here? Hang Show on. me. Let me see. Let me see. Of course it's hours. Yeah. We waste so much time looking at our phone. I've never actually like just looked for it. It just yeah. kind of pops up. It's actually awful how much time we waste on our uh, phones. Yeah. It's like bad. Yeah. Uh, Especially I don't... now that we might go into a second lockdown. Oh, damn, Rose. It'd be scary. Oh, now. God. Um, it's okay, Daniel. I wanted to show you. Does it show like once a week? Yeah. It like shows. Mm-hmm. And then it will be like, oh, um, it shows like a breakdown as well of like, of like what apps you use. Yeah, Is so Instagram it, high up yeah, there? <laughs> it will be like time spent on social. And yeah. Stuff. And I don't even, I feel like I'm not even on my phone that much. Like you're probably not even that bad. No. So I, imagine if you were bad. Yeah. I think on average I was like three hours a day or something like this right. on my phone. Right. Which is still pretty bad. Isn't yeah. it? If you think about it, if you it's have crazy, you have 24 hours in a day, let's say you sleep eight hours at 16 hours out mm. of those 16 hours, you're spending three of those hours on your phone. Yeah. Doing mindless bullshit. Exactly. Well, this is the thing. It's like you're not really doing anything mm-hmm. that productive, to be honest. I know. So. I know. But I'm also guilty of it. So you what can is. I say? Anyways, guys, that was our little uh, our random lovely, episode once again. Lovely episode. All right, you guys. So thank you so much for listening mm-hmm. once again. I know we were all over the place. My Advil is kicking in. So. It is? Oh, you feel, you're feeling better now. <laughs> I'm That's feeling good. a little better. Right at the end. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, check us out on Patreon, guys, if you guys mm-hmm. want to uh, get a bonus episode every single month yep. and get your episodes a week earlier than everybody else. Yep. And they are ad free as well. That's correct. So you can watch the videos completely ad free if mm-hmm. you like the videos. Yep. So, yeah, the link is in the uh, description or the show notes. Like, yeah. what do you call them? Okay. Show notes, description. Patreon.com slash the savage podcast. Exactly. Uh, check us out on YouTube as well. Uh, you can catch the, if you want to watch the video versions of the, mm-hmm. of the episodes. And then as always, you know, keep listening to us on your favorite platforms. Tell your friends. Tell your tell family. Your family. <laughs> oh, and, and don't forget to follow us on the Instagram as well. Yeah. The Savage Podcast. And yeah, that'd be it. All right. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for Thank listening. You. Bye. Bye.